Hello, Gary Simon here of designcourse.com. Today we're going to step into Adobe Illustrator to design a tribal tattoo. So these tribal tattoos, sometimes uh, guys have them on their arms and women have them on their back, you know, tramp stamps, whatever. Uh, so yeah, we're going to do this also by only using perfect circles. So you'll see how this works. It's kind of interesting. You can use uh, the perfect circle technique for other things like icon, logo design, and all that. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Also, if you need access to my project file that I finished with, I've made that available for free at designcourse.com for this video. All right, let's get started. All right, let's go to File New here in Adobe Illustrator. And I'm gonna just keep the width at 859 by 600 points. That's what works well for my resolution at 100%. So Control or Command 1 will get you to 100%. And we're going to go to View, Show Grid, and then View, Snap to Grid. All right. So we want to get rid of the fill. So you just select it and click on this little red slash. That way gets rid of the actual fill. And we'll leave this black stroke. And I'm going to choose the Ellipse tool by left-clicking and dragging out. And then coming to any of these portions where the darker grids intersect. And then just hit Shift and Alt, left-click and drag. All right. So now, I uh, actually I do want to make one quick adjustment. If I take this uh, stroke color, we'll just make it like a gray. That's a little bit too. There we go. Control C and Control F will duplicate duplicate it rather. And what we want to do is just kind of imagine if the line were to start here and come around where these intersect, and then stop, and then continue on. And we basically, if we do that, we can get an idea of what the shape will ultimately look like. So it'll come up around here, here, and here, and right there. All right, so then if we take those again, and I increase this right around there, and it will stop right here, and this is where it will be mirrored over there. I may want to make that a little bit bigger. All right, and then take this one, Control C, Control F, and increase the size of that as well. But we want the size of these to taper a little bit. So take this one, Control C, Control F, right around there looks good. So the intersection it will start here with these initial ones, and then come back down right around there. All right, so now at this point, I'm going to take these, Control C and Control F, just move those over temporarily, holding Shift. And I want to select the originals that we created. So that's this one, and this one, and this one. Oh, wait, no, I am incorrect. Uh, it's kind of hard to see these based on it. If we get our layers out here, we'll see. Actually, I'm going to group these temporarily hide it. All right, so the first ones that we created would be the first, okay, every other because we duplicated those. All right, so what we want to do is go to Window and Pathfinder with those three selected and click on Unite. All right, and then do the same thing with these three right here. All right. So now what we want to do is I'm going to take a rectangle and the left portion of it should intersect with both of these right on that line. Oops. Sorry about that. And I think that right there is pretty good. All right. So if I take this object path, divide objects below. That will divide them. All right, so now what I want to do is get rid of the top portion using the Direct Select tool right here. All 
All right, just like that. Okay, so now I want to combine this into a single shape. So if I take this one up here, hold shift and, oops. All right, sorry, I had to pause. If we select this and hold shift and merge those, and then we have these two over here. And just hold shift and select those and connect them. All right, so now if I get rid of the stroke, make it, oops, and switch to the foreground and make that black, Control C, Control F, go to Transform, Reflect, and Vertical. Oh, I turned off Snapping real quick. If I go to View and Snap to Grid, that'll connect them. This almost looks like a mouth or something, some type of weird thing. <laughs> uh, all right, so let's bring back the group that we have here and just move it into play. Oops move it into place back over here all right we can add some more to this obviously you can get much more complex I'm gonna ungroup and it's all about kind of just envisioning you know what you can do with these shapes I uh, I'm gonna take them again and duplicate those and group them control G and just move them out of sight hide them all right, and I'm gonna get rid of some of these over here. I just wanna keep this one right here. All right, and All right around there, control C and control F. All right, take this and I'm gonna duplicate that. Oops, damn it, let me get back here. Actually, I'm gonna scale it differently, I think. All right, so you're like, well, okay, what the hell is going on here? I'm almost in the same boat. But basically, <laughs> let me see if I can uh, play with this a little bit. So real quickly, I'm going to take those and duplicate them. My idea is to have this portion right here kind of create some white space and cut into this area. And then this will be some more black that will come alongside of it. So let's see if I can do that. Let me hide that real quick. So we have these. Go to Window Pathfinder. No, not Pattern Options. Pathfinder. Yeah, we don't want to do that yet. Uh, what I can do is real quickly take the Rectangle tool Move everything up just one notch because I don't want this intersecting this. Object path, divide objects below. And take the direct selection tool, get rid of that part. All right, and All right, combine those and also combine these and give it white. Come down to the stroke area and get rid of that. All right. Okay, and 
what we can do is select both of these with the pathfinder click on this one minus front All right so that gets rid of it makes it transparent we bring back this other thing over here and yeah what I can do is actually let's get rid of that bring those back that's why I duplicated those was that in the right position doesn't look like it let me see here there we go all right so I can get rid of this one and now we have these two to work with so we want it to end right here all right so what I'll do is take the direct selection tool let's see now that's fine and Yeah, I could take the uh, I'll take this rectangle tool, come up here, and let me turn off snap real quick. We'll end right around there. Object path, divide objects below. Okay, get rid of that. Oh, wait, didn't delete those. What the hell? Huh, it's not working. Divide the damn objects below, you bastard. <laughs> Alright, uh... Actually, what am I doing? One second. Yeah, that's not going to work either. Okay, so I had to pause. The one we want to use is exclude by selecting them both, and that way it creates an intersection point right there. Take the direct selection tool and delete that one. And looks like there's an extra one down there. All right, so now we can take those and get rid of a stroke. Make this black. All right. And as you can see, you can just continually play around with this circular geometry to kind of create something that's just kind of interesting and tribalish, I guess you could say. Um, so let me. Oh, what sucks is I didn't maintain those other circles. I wanted to keep those. Oh, well, no big deal. So just doing a lot of the same thing, I'm going to pause this and then just. Uh, come back and uh, show you what I've come up with in terms of more detail. All right, so I just added this thing down here. Uh, it is time consuming just to do this, uh, so I think we get the point. So what I want to do, just real quickly, I'm going to get rid of, oh, real quick, I'm going to make this, um, let me see here. Well, actually, I'm going to wait until I do that. Um, what I want to do is take this, Control C, Control F. Actually, before I do that, even make sure. Okay, uh, I want to get our circles here in place. Okay, those are in place, but there's still, yeah, these ones over here. Those ones right there. I'm going to recreate the ones that I created for this one because I accidentally deleted those. So if I take this one just real quickly, make this one right there. Yeah, that seems right. And boy, this is a mess. I should not have deleted those ones. Oh, well. I uh, I'm going to go to view and turn off snap to grid. All 
All right. All right, that looks pretty even with this one right here. All right. Uh, cool. So now what I want to do is I'm going to delete this. And I'm going to select all of these just by using the magic wand tool. Hit control G. Put them at the bottom. All right. And I'm going to take this. All right, so let me bring this down. Oh, okay. We have to unlock that. And my Pathfinder. Minus front. There, now it's basically transparent as it should be. All right, so now if I take everything... I'm going to group it, control C, control F, right click, reflect, hit vertical, and let me snap, turn on snap again. All right, and if I real quickly open up that group, take this one out of it, put it at the bottom, there, none of it collides with it, the design. All right, so let's hide, drag this out here too. There, you kind of have the beginnings of some sort of tramp stamp tribal tattoo type thing. Actually, because I'm demented, let me put something here real quick. I hope I don't offend anybody. Ah, there we go. <laughs> That's perfect for some... All right, I'm not even going to say it. All right, I'm going to delete that real quick. Uh, I'm having too much fun. Yeah, so that's how you can use, you know, just perfect ellipses to create something that's real cool like this. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I apologize for all the, the pauses and screwing up. I didn't go through this tutorial before beginning this, so uh, that is the reason for that. But yeah, uh, check out designcourse.com, subscribe here on YouTube, and yeah, I have another video for you tomorrow for those of you unaware. I, man, I've done a video every day with exception to one day because I was like feigning and stuff. It was all messed up uh, of 2014. So I think I've done about 110 videos. There's been around 110-ish days so far in 2014. So yep, stick around. There will be plenty more. All right, goodbye.